So you just bought a ZK MT21 integrated amplifier from AliExpress, eBay, whatever, it doesn't matter. And you can't find any information on two things. One, what sort of power supply do you actually need to drive this? The literature and the manual says 12 to 24 volts. And the second thing is, does this really put out 50 watts a channel into the stereo and 100 watts a channel into the subwoofer channel? Well, let's find out. Okay, this is not going to be an unboxing because this thing has been done to death. This is an MT21, it's a Bluetooth compatible 2.1 channel base power amplifier board. It's got 50 watts by 2 uh, for your stereo outputs and it's got 100 watts out of a subwoofer output. But what I can't find anywhere on the internet is it says basically you need for your power input you need between 12 and 24 volts but there's no specification or no data anywhere on YouTube or anywhere that I can find that says if you've only got say a 1 amp 12 volt transformer what does that mean for power output if you've got a 5 amp 24 volt transformer what does that mean for power output and also how hot does this thing get so I plan to use my thermal camera We'll take some measurements at different power outputs of the heatsink. We'll also do some voltage checks and some power output checks for of the main amplifier board. Run this thing at load and see what we come up with. So first impressions are excellent. You get some little knurled aluminium knobs made of the thinnest, thinnest aluminium. Uh, you get all the spaces that have to go between the board and the top plate, which is in this plastic bag here top plate and bottom plate and it looks like you've got some Chinese instructions but it's all pretty straightforward you've got some pins on the back that say what they are so subwoofer negative subwoofer positive left right and DC 12 to 24 volts your auxiliary in and there's a Bluetooth aerial here so I'll have a little bit of a look here. I don't intend to use this for Bluetooth, but it's good that you can. I basically want to use this as a test amplifier for some of the electronic repairs that I do, uh, rather than having to hook up my 35-year-old uh, TIAC 25 by 25 watt amplifier. Amazing that you can replace a home stereo amplifier, integrated amplifier, with this uh, 35 years later. Anyway the march of technology. So just quickly, here are the, the instructions, these are in Chinese, no use to me, my Mandarin's pretty abysmal, but luckily on the other side there is English, so it tells you all of the specifications of the amplifier board and most importantly it does give you a little tidbit over here talking about the power supply, which is really really quite important. Right, we may as well assemble this thing while we're here. Now, obviously, this has to go on top because otherwise you can't get access to the screw threads for the speaker connections. You might think that you need access to these labels underneath. You don't because it's all repeated on the top here. And it's very, very simple once you open this packet. And it's really good that they give you this little screwdriver. And I've got to say, I've done two of these already. The build quality of this feels really nice. So just hold the little one in with your finger, screw the top one on. Yeah, that only goes one way. All these screws are the same. Now I've seen these for as low as I think $9 on Alibaba. I did buy, I've had a lot of really bad experiences with Alibaba lately. I tried to buy a 240 volt relay, which is this one here. I ended up buying it from eBay because I couldn't find one in Australia. Um, so finding a 240 volt coil apparently is quite a challenge. They are all either 12 or 24 volt coils. I bought one from Alibaba. Um, sorry, my apologies. AliExpress, not Alibaba. And it never turned up. So not impressed with them at all. Pinch it with your thumb if you're or your forefinger if you're not used to doing these. Slide it along until it seats in. Bingo. The other thing that is really cool is you get a power socket. How good is that? So if you don't have the right plug adapter, you just screw your wires in and you're done. Now rotate these all the way left. And hear that? That's got to be power because that's a detent there. One, two, three, four, five. Done. Beautiful. Okay, done. Go and do some testing. Righto, so you've bought your little amp and you think, okay, the packaging and the website information says anywhere between 12 volts and 24 volts. How much do you actually need? So what I'm going to do is I've got a couple of power supplies here. Excuse the crap on my desk. It's an ever-growing problem. 
This is 12 volt, one amp. You get these are a dime, a dime a dozen. Basically, they are. They've even got the correct plug at the other end. So let's call that the bottom of the power supply spectrum. Is this going to be enough to drive this little amplifier? The other thing that I've got is an AC power adapter, 18 volts at 1.1 amp. Uh, so this also has the right kind of plug at the end. Positive is always center, negative always is always at the outside. The other thing that I've got is a bench test power supply. So I can crank that up to 12 volts. I can adjust the current up to 5 amps. So I can, in fact, I can drive that all the way up to basically looks like about 19 volts at 5 amps. So I have no shortage of power here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'll do some tests, do some volume tests, do some uh, voltage output tests from a loaded condition and see how much power you actually need and what sort of power supply you need to drive this little amplifier. Let's go. Right, so the first test is this dodgy little one amp power supply. The Advertising and all of the web reviews do talk about cleanliness of power supply. I don't have any way to test this, whether it's clean or unclean, whether it's basically putting out a square wave or a good uh, uh, sine wave. So anyway, we've got it plugged in. I've got it plugged into my phone, and let's see what it sounds like. I've also got it hooked up to a 6-inch, it's probably rated about 50 watts, uh, an LG subwoofer. A little blue LED there. All right, sounds pretty good. Getting some music. Okay, so I'm playing some royalty-free music here and I'm actually really, really surprised. This is power supply is starting to warm up a little bit. But I'm, I'm actually really impressed how much power you can get out of a one amp power supply. Now that power, yeah, as I said, it is starting to get warm. I think what I'll do is I'll hook up my switch mode and I'll see how much current that's actually drawing uh, to produce a reasonable volume at 12 volts. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I've got this jury rig. This is actually the cool little plug that actually ships with the unit. So you can see that I've got that set at about 12 volts. I can crank that up to around about 18 to 20 volts with this unit. So I'm going to plug this in and see what sort of power I get out of it. This is a very, very clean uh, power supply. Uh, so let's see how we go and we'll compare it to this dodgy little one. I actually think this 12 volt power supply came with some security cameras that I bought years ago. Turn this on, a little blue LED, it's quite nice. The intent is that that is visible from the front, which you can see it just is. Okay, let's crank the volume up a fair bit. God, that sounds so so horrible but that was peaking at just over one amp at 12 volts so if I turn that voltage up let's crank that up to say 18 volts which is within spec for the unit the, the unit says 12 to 24 volts we'll give this another crank the amperage should obviously be a lot less because the voltage is higher P equals IV Okay, so that's peaking at around about one and a half amps there, uh, with this thing absolutely cranked fully up. Now, what I'm driving is I'm driving this six inch subwoofer, and I'm also driving these two uh, 60 watt bookshelf Onkyo speakers. They sound pretty rubbish, but for testing, they are perfect. So what we're seeing is that, let's crank this back, let's go a little bit crazy. Let's go down to say nine volts, turn the volume on again. So it's actually not, it's not as loud, it's much more distorted, a lot more distorted, but it's not going anywhere near one amp. So let's see what happens when we limit our voltage to five volts. Okay, so that's only about half an amp. Sounds pretty hashy, pretty distorted. The volumes are all cranked up on the, uh, on the amp module here. Okay, this is my little test rig. Excuse my bits of bike here. Another one of my little passions. 
I've got a AC voltmeter hooked up here, and the AC vol voltmeter is going to be hooked up to the output of one of the speaker channels. Obviously, I've got my phone as a source. I've got my measured input, which is currently sitting at 5 volts, and I'm going to measure current. I'm going to measure output voltage, and I know that these uh, Onkyo speakers are 8 ohms. I've measured them, and that's what it says on the back. It actually measures at 7.9 ohms, so which is uh, pretty spot on. So we'll just do some tests and we'll see what voltage practically you need to run this little amplifier. Okay, the results are in for this ZK MT21 mini amplifier and there are no real surprises here. Basically, the amplifier puts out 55 watts of channel into stereo, which is actually slightly higher than the claim performance from the manufacturer, and it puts out up to 73 watts of channel mono into a 6 ohm load uh, for the subwoofer channel. So that is really, really surprising. I've tested other, other amplifiers in the past and they don't even come close to the claimed RMS power outputs. Even if the total harmonic distortion is very high, even if it's say 10% or 5%, it is still very, very impressive to come anywhere near those figures. It's also worth remembering that as the voltage drops, the, you can hear the harmonic distortion. I would say that we're probably getting into the realm of DC clipping and the sound becomes almost unusable. But what this does prove is that you can absolutely use a standard 1 amp 12 volt power supply, uh, a, a plug pack that you might have lying around, and if you can drive that up or get that up to 18 volts or close to 24 volts, you're going to have a lot cleaner sound with a lot less distortion and a lot more power coming through the subwoofer. The other thing was that the temperature of the amplification chip did not get above about 58, let's call it 60 degrees Celsius, which is really, really impressive. Normally these things run extremely hot. There is a processing IC next to the power amplification chip and the heatsink. It got up to about 65 degrees, which is well within spec. Anyway, an awesome little unit. Can't recommend this high, highly enough, especially for the price. For $12, $13 landed at your door. It also came to me from China in about three weeks time, which is really impressive. And a final word on quality, they don't sound as nice and as deep and as punchy as a integrated amplifier that, that you might have lying around, but for the size of them, as a basically a backup amplifier or for a small room, or even particularly for a set of computer speakers, they really do punch above their weight. And I'm just feeling that. This has been driven pretty hard and it's not particularly warm. I'll do some frequency sweeps. I'm going to run this pretty hard. I'll get my thermal camera and we'll see how hot this thing gets as well. Okay, so in case you're ever wondering, this is the Bluetooth name of this device, WZ-BT 5.0. So because I can't plug in my thermal imaging camera and my 3.5mm audio jack, I'm connecting through Bluetooth. What I have found is that the Bluetooth connection on this does degrade the sound quality a little bit. It's audible. Anyway, let's run this for a while. I'll get this some real heat into this heatsink, and we'll see if we can get some images happening. I'll just swap over so you can actually see it in real time. So that's showing that the heatsink is currently at about 55 degrees. It's been running pretty hard. I've been cranking this thing, but let's run it for a bit and at a higher volume, and we'll see what the temperature gets up to. Than 55 degrees. So that's with all of the volume settings set right to high. And we can see that on the thermal camera now. I'll switch to the actual video camera view, uh, the thermal camera uh, feed, and you'll see that that won't get. That's not getting higher than about 55 degrees, which is absolutely uh, astonishing. That's fantastic. Really, really good performance. So some of the ICs are getting pretty warm down there. Some of the processing ICs down on the board, but really, really impressive. So. This is after about half an hour of pretty hard running, sitting at about 56.5 degrees. That's fantastic, really, really good performance. So all in all, guys, a cracking little device, this thing. It's barely warm to touch. Uh, if you've got an old computer power supply lying around, this is absolutely perfect. But astonishingly, you can also use any old 12 volt, one amp power supply will be absolutely fine. And even if, you, if you've only got five volts or nine volts to drive this thing, it'll absolutely work. So what a cracking piece of technology. And it replaces something the size of this. So this TIAC, this AX35, which is a beautiful amp by the way, from about 1983-84 from memory, and this one works beautifully. 
I've done a full resto on this. This is rated at 25 watts a channel, but look at the size of it. It's a standard 440 mil wide, and yes, it's a better amp, but bang for your buck, this thing is huge. But overall, that little unit over there is super, super impressive for its size. Absolute winner. And for the price, I mean, what did I pay? $10, $12 for this thing? Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. What a winner. I don't often say that. Anyway, I hope you found this instructive. And I would say if you need a tiny amplifier and you've got a spare power pack lying around, go and buy one. They're great.